Hello, my name is Kweku. I am a pharmacist. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10 for short. We're going to be looking at primarily seven benefits that you can derive from taking CoQ10 supplements. We would obviously also talk about exactly what it is and we would also look at some safety issues or some side effects that you should be aware of if you are planning or if you are taking CoQ10. So what exactly is CoQ10? Well, CoQ10 is a compound that is made by your body and it is stored in the cells, uh, particularly in a part of the cell called the mitochondria. Now, several people have labeled mitochondria as the powerhouse of the cell because it is involved in a lot of the cells processes including the production of energy so yes you guessed it right coq10 is actually involved in energy production in the body aside energy production also coq10 is also a very powerful antioxidant now why is that important well antioxidants are important because they get rid of certain chemicals in the body called free radicals which are notorious for causing a phenomenon called oxidative stress now oxidative stress can cause tissue damage it can cause inflammation and it can even result in the death of a cell. There have been several studies that have linked oxidative stress to certain diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Now CoQ10 is present in pretty much every cell in the body but its concentrations are highest in the organs that have the greatest energy demand. So I can think of the heart, the kidneys, uh, the liver. Those ones have very high concentrations of CoQ10. Now unfortunately it's not only age that causes a decline in CoQ10. There are several other factors that may cause a decline in the CoQ10 levels in your body. So for example if you are taking a statin to manage your cholesterol, atovastatin, rosuvastatin, any of those medications, it can result in a decline or a decrease in your CoQ10 levels. If some people have a genetic deficiency where they are not able to synthesize enough CoQ10, there are instances also when sometimes when you are sick, your body's natural production of CoQ10 may also go down. And when you are sick also, the demands may actually go up. So you have a situation where the demand goes up, but you're also producing less. And other nutritional deficiencies. So for example, if you are deficient in vitamin B6, it can also lead further down the line to a decrease in your production of CoQ10. Well, now we have a fair idea of what CoQ10 is. Now let's look at the seven benefits that one can obtain by taking a supplement of CoQ10 or eating foods that are high in CoQ10. Number one, CoQ10 can help with diabetes. As mentioned already, oxidative stress can lead to a lot of cell damage and cell damage has been associated with a lot of metabolic diseases, particularly diabetes. It has also been shown that CoQ10 can actually improve insulin sensitivity. This is because abnormal mitochondrial function, that is when your mitochondria is not working as well as it should because of low levels of CoQ10, it can lead to insulin resistance. In one study, for example, that lasted over 12 weeks for type 2 diabetics who were given supplements of CoQ10, they noticed that at the end of the study, they had marked or significantly reduced levels of fasting blood glucose as well as their A1C. Number two, CoQ10 might play a role in prevention of cancer. Now, if you know anything about cancer, you will know that anytime you have high levels of free radicals circulating in your body, you kind of increase your risks of developing cancer. So if you have CoQ10, that would get rid of some of these free radicals, then you definitely reduce your risk of developing cancer. Also, as mentioned earlier, oxidative stress can lead to permanent cell damage and it can actually change the cell structure or the form of the cell, which obviously increases the risk of cancer. Now, there are studies that point to the fact that people who are low in CoQ10 levels have a 53% increase in the risk of developing cancer. Number three, reducing the side effects of statins. As mentioned earlier, if you take a statin, especially over a long term or a long period of time, you reduce your levels of CoQ10. Studies have found that supplementing with CoQ10 in some people actually leads to a reduction in the muscle weakness and other side effects that people experience from taking statins. For example, there was a 2013 study involving people with coronary artery disease who took supplements of CoQ10. At the end of the study, they realized that such people or the people who took the supplement had lower levels of inflammation and also complained less of the side effects of their statins. Number four, reducing migraines. Now, according to the American Academy of Neurology and the American Headache Society, CoQ10 may prevent migraines in some situations or at least may reduce their frequency. So for example, there was one large study involving 1,550 people. Uh, one group was giving CoQ10 supplements and the other group were giving placebos. They noticed at the end of the study that the group that had the CoQ10 supplements experienced less severe and less frequent migraines or headaches altogether. Number five, it improves heart health. CoQ10 has been shown to improve the symptoms of congestive heart failure and in some instances actually may even reduce blood pressure. For example, in one study involving 641 people who were given CoQ10 or a placebo for one year, the CoQ10 group had fewer hospitalizations. In other words, they reported less to the hospital for serious complications of heart failure and other cardiovascular events. 
Number six, improvement in physical performance. Now, because CoQ10 is involved in energy production due to its effect on the mitochondria, which I mentioned is the powerhouse of the cell, which is responsible for pretty much all the energy production of the body. If there are low levels of CoQ10 in the mitochondria, the mitochondria cannot function as well. There's less energy. The muscles are not able to contract effectively, and therefore it leads to general lack of energy or a general decrease in performance. However, if you have optimal amounts of CoQ10 in the body, then the mitochondria is able to function optimally, contraction is optimal, and there is release of the energy that the body needs to function. Number seven, it could help with fertility. Now it's obvious that female fertility decreases with age due to a, a reduction in the number of eggs produced and also the quality of the eggs produced. Now one thing that actually expedites or accelerates this process is oxidative stress. So if there's a high level of oxidative stress, then the number and the quality of the eggs produced also decline. And that is where CoQ10 comes in because CoQ10 is directly involved in reducing oxidative stress. So the implication is that if you take a CoQ10 supplement or if you have optimal amounts of CoQ10, then you reduce this oxidative stress and in so doing, you also limit the increase in the decline of the quality and the quantity of the egg that you're producing, obviously leading to an increase in fertility. There have also been studies to demonstrate that CoQ10 may actually improve the quality and the concentration of sperms in men. So the next question is, how do you increase your levels of CoQ10? Well, you can do that by either taking a supplement or you can eat foods that are high in CoQ10. And foods that are high in CoQ10 include oily fish such as salmon, mackerel, and sardines. You can also find them in eggs, in nuts, in chicken, and organ meats such as livers and the hearts. And you can also find it in whole grains. So depending on what you want to do, if you want to do a supplement or if you want to increase your dietary intake of these foods, all of them will drive to the same endpoint. Now, CoQ10 is generally considered safe. Side effects are minimal, very rare. The only people who experience side effects are generally like people who take it in very high concentrations, but there has been very minimal complaints of diarrhea, nausea, and heartburn. But on the whole, it is very well tolerated. So high level overview of CoQ10. I hope you found some value in it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and thank you for staying through. Stay blessed. I'll catch you in the next video.